This is What It Takes, a show that peers into the minds of groundbreaking innovators. Want to know how they turn big ideas into realities? Keep watching and listening. And as you do, share your questions with hashtag what it takes and you. On today's show, you'll meet Marissa Mullen of That Cheese Plate fame. She turned her salami river making skills into a full time business with nearly 600,000 Instagram followers dedicated to charcuterie building and enjoying. Marissa's cookbook was named Amazon's Best of 2020, but this du fromage obsessed founder has been churning out new spins on food styling since 2013. Our conversation will leave you the opposite of bored, but you'll certainly have enough inspiration to build one. Welcome, Marissa. So we want to hear your elevator pitch for that cheese plate. And to keep things exciting, we'll put 30 seconds on the clock. Okay, so that cheese plate is your go-to source for cheese and charcuterie board inspiration. I post tips, tricks, recipes, etc., to make a cheese plate, take it to the next level. I'm also the founder of Cheese by Numbers, which is the step-by-step method to putting together the perfect cheese plate and creator of that cheese class, which is the first ever build your own cheese plate workshop. So now I know what you do, but not how you got here. What was your light bulb moment, not only for creating charcuterie boards, but also for turning this into a real thing? Uh, So I always, I've always loved charcuterie boards and I love how visually appealing they are, how they bring people together. And when I was in college at Northeastern, actually, I would throw cheese parties with my friends and we would make little charcuterie boards with, you know, just cheap ingredients from the corner store. And I always love to take pictures of them. So I made this Instagram, that cheese plate in college as a way just to document my cheese plate creations. And it was just a place of just pure passion for food and for photography. So I never thought it could be a business at all. Uh, As I got kind of more into this world of cheese, I realized oh, you know, there's some following growing naturally. There's some interest in these cheese plates. Maybe I can take it to the next level by making a merch store. So I studied music industry at Northeastern and basically applied everything that you would kind of put into a musician into my brand. So I'm like, I need a logo. I need a merch store. I need to do events. So I started growing it in that way, which I think kind of set it apart from other food Instagrams at the time. And then when I came up with the method cheese by numbers, that's when the first light bulb really clicked because this method was something that I built, you know, I built my charcuterie boards in the same order every time where it would start with cheese and then add meat, produce, crunch dip, garnish. And I broke it down into a paint by numbers map because for me, I'm such a visual learner and it's so much easier to come kind of process it that way. And once I started another Instagram for cheese by numbers, that started to gain a ton of traction really quickly. And I realized, okay, this was the missing piece between these really beautiful artistic creations and breaking it down to make it super easy to understand and to build. So the creation of Cheese by Numbers actually led to the big boost of press that came in in late 2018, which was kind of the reason why that cheese plate is where it is now. Um, The Rachel Ray show ended up finding Cheese by Numbers and putting me on the show which then just, you know, kind of skyrocketed um, so many different opportunities for me, which led me to be doing this full time. Let's jump into Ask the Innovator. We've asked members of our community what their questions are for folks like you who've really built something from the ground up. What unusual but successful work habits help you stay on track? I mean, I'm pretty type A. I feel like I like I need to make to-do lists every day. I need to like make sure that I'm so organized. If I'm not organized, I just, you know, drifting <laughs> off into space. So it's really important for me to try to keep myself on a schedule. Um, I feel like I've been definitely taking, I don't know, as being a freelancer, like leaving the corporate world of late night TV and entering this new world of freelance life. Um, my schedule is definitely more fluid. Like I'll find myself not working on anything until 10 p.m., but then until like 10 p.m. <laughs> so like the, the whole nine to five is very much like here and there. I'll also find myself like waking up in the middle of the night with an idea and having to write it down. And like, it just doesn't stop. It's, it's an interesting uh, energy now because before when you're working for someone else, you kind of have that time where you can check out and be like, okay, work's done now but I'm constantly thinking about 
work and constantly like coming up with ideas wherever I am. The journey to Rachel Ray's discovery of you, I'm sure, came with some challenges. What was the bump in the road you encountered and how did you overcome it? Definitely the book. The concept was cheese by numbers. So I wanted to create this kind of coffee table book that gave you step by steps how to build cheese plates. And I had no idea how to write a book, no idea how to publish a book, let alone, and had one friend who had a book out that didn't have anything to do with food. And she introduced me to her book agent who worked at this really small literary agency in Brooklyn. And I approached her with this deck of my idea for Cheese by Numbers. And she was super excited about it. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm doing it. I'm going to get a book deal. So then I work on this proposal for months. We pitch out the proposal to 20, I think 23 different publishers. Every single person rejected it. You know, I feel like I've always been such an optimistic person and very much like if I want something, I'll put my mind to it and I'll get it. And uh, that has, that was like first really big <laughs> uh, pothole. I, I kind of had to take that back and be like, wait, this isn't as easy as I thought it would be. This is definitely going to be a journey. And right now is not the time. Take your time. All of the publisher's reasonings were I didn't have enough press and I didn't have enough followers. So at the time I only had 20,000 followers on that cheese plate, which seems like a lot, but for a book publisher, it's not enough. And then cheese by numbers, the account didn't even exist yet. So because of this failure, I was mad and I was like, you know what? I'm going to make cheese by numbers on Instagram and show them that this is a good concept. And that was the account that Rachel Ray found. So it all kind of was full circle at the end of the day. It sounds like you had the network and you were tapping into the right resources, but it took that determination to say, no, I believe in this and you should too. Yeah, for sure. Like I, I was definitely upset for maybe like, you know, a week, but then after that, I sort of took that and just kept fighting for it because I knew that it would be something bigger. You invented the cheese by numbers method, which helps somebody like me stay organized, know where to start and make my way through the board building process. Yes. How would you build a board for innovating? How do you make it look beautiful and neat, even if the journey takes you all over the place? Step one would be passion because you actually need to enjoy what you're doing because you're going to be spending a lot of time doing it. And kind of like what I said before, if you jump headfirst into something like this and you're not passionate about it, it's not going to be very fun. And then, you know, that energy just goes into everything you do. So the foundation is passion. And then step two would be authenticity. So there's so many, I mean, right now there are so many charcuterie board accounts out there now because it's a big trend, which is amazing. And, you know, I'm so honored to have inspired so many people, but if I try to look at other accounts and maybe copy a viral trend at the time, or try to stay on the trends with TikTok and, you know, kind of deviate from what I feel is authentic to myself, it probably won't come across as something that, you know, is that cheese plate. Uh, step three would be goal setting. So similar to what I said before, um, just because I feel like if you go into something like this with just an open plane ahead of you, it could be a little bit overwhelming. Step four, similar to this would be organization. So kind of stay on top of the admin work. I think a lot of the times with me personally, I get so carried away with the creative that I forget about taxes and I forget about, <laughs> you know, keeping everything organized on the administrative side, which can pile up and feel really overwhelming. Step five would be positivity. So again, like not everything's going to work out in your favor. At this whole business and world of freelance life ebbs and flows so much. Um, but if you take one bad day and make that define you, that's not okay because, you know, tomorrow's a new day and it will be different. So always try to keep a positive mindset and also keep uh, like keep positive mindset, but then positivity with the people around you as well. So like whoever you interact with, always be kind, always be a positive person because that energy will reflect way beyond just you. And then the garnish on top, step six, <laughs> is to trust the process. If you have failures, trust that it will be okay because down the line, you'll look back and see that failure and see that it's just an opportunity for growth. So trust the process as your little rosemary on top. 
Cheers to Marissa Mullen, Northeastern graduate and That Cheese Plate founder who shared what it takes to turn passions for entertainment and foodie inspo into a delicious and growing enterprise. Thanks for tuning in. Share your questions and ideas for future guests with hashtag WhatItTakesNU on all platforms. This is What It Takes.